Hi, for this video we'll be talking about matrix operations in MATLAB or if you're using the Octave, it's the same thing. So we went through variables, which were just a single number and can be considered a one by one array. There are vectors. So this is a lot of what you'll use in statics, dynamics, calculus three, where like you break forces into X, Y, Z components or do cross products for moments. And I have a couple of those example calculations in your quiz. Not that you need to, to know those, so it'll take you step by step, but it'll just show you what some of these vectors are used for. And then if you have more than just a single row or a single column of numbers, so instead of just a one kind of a 1D vector, if you have a 2D system of numbers, then we'll call it a matrix where rows are going top to bottom and columns left to right. And if I want to pick out any element within this matrix, then I can just tell it the row and the column number for where it is. So if I go down three rows and over three columns or something, I can grab different arrays. Okay, so let's hop over into Octave. Let's go ahead and start by making a row of numbers, and I'll call this little vector r, and we'll just do one, two, three. So you can separate the numbers in this row with just a space. You could also separate them with a um, comma, but it's probably easier just to put a space in there. If instead of making a row, I want to make a column of numbers, I would do that with a semicolon. So you can see they're going in a column instead of a row now. Um, let's see if I want to make a maybe a three by three. So something that has rows and columns. So I can put the first row in here, and then the second row, and then the third row. And then if I want to grab a particular element out of that, I can just put the um, row and column of the element I want to get. So if I go down two and over three, then I'm going to get that sixth element in there. Okay, let's say I have two vectors that have, say, x, y, z components in them. If you put a semicolon at the end of a line, that's going to suppress the output for that line. So I'm just going to fill in a couple of random numbers. So now I have these two vectors and let's say we want to do the dot product. A lot of times figuring out an angle between two vectors you can use a dot product for these. So we'll just say what is a dot product of those two vectors? So that would be 1 times 4 plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 6. So it does x times x, y times y, z times z. You can also do the cross product. So this is used for things like finding moments or um, R cross MV angular momentum. There's a lot of applications for cross products. That's finding the perpendicular piece of two vectors. So the sine of the angle, so cosine. If I want to know the length of a vector, I can simply say norm. And that would be the same. So remember, our vector m was 1, 2, 3. I could also do square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. So that's pretty tedious to do 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. And that's a very common thing you do with vectors is try and get the length of it. So that norm function is, is quite handy. I've cleared the screen. I'm going to go back and re-grab that just three by three matrix. And you saw how I did that. All the commands that you've typed in are down here in the command history. And you can rerun anything just by double clicking on it. So that's kind of convenient that you don't have to type it in again. 
Let's go ahead and try out just a couple of basic, like m times 2. What's that going to do? So if I multiply everything in here, 1 times 2, 2 times 2, 3 times 2, that's what's going on. So any kind of um, arithmetic we can do here, I can divide it by 2. So 1 divided by 2, 2 divided by 2, or how about squaring the entire thing? So this is interesting. M squared did not give us 1 squared or 2 squared or 3 squared. Remember what M was on here. So why not? And this is where we'll get into the element by element operand. So instead of saying just M squared, we're going to use this little dot. And this will um, go through and square each individual element here. So we have 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared. So that, that little element by element dot comes in handy. We can then, um, let's, what would happen if I subtracted the matrix from one another? Then you get the zero matrix. Or if I divide it by itself, then you get a bunch of ones. So try out that unit element by element operand. Last little bit, let me go through a couple of unique matrices. There's the um, identity matrix. So if we say EYE, let's make a, a five by five. So this gives us a diagonal of one. For all of these, try out the um, help feature on Octave. So if you type in help and whatever function you have, it will give you some examples and explain the different ways of using it. We won't get into classes now, but for this one, it's going to make a square matrix. So you probably don't have to put in the rows and the columns for this. It's going to just assume that it's square. But if you want to put in rows and columns, you'll get the same thing. So there's some, some kind of information on different identity matrices. We can also make a um, matrix with just ones. So if I type in ones, I get a whole bunch of ones. Or if I want some kind of a number, then I can just um, multiply it by that number. There's a random number generator. So if I just do random, that will go between 0 and 1. Or I can actually tell it what I want random numbers in between. So if I say random numbers from 0 to 10, and maybe a 3 by 3 matrix or something. So now my random numbers are integers instead of decimals. Um, so just a couple of, of neat little things in there. OK, so the quiz will go through a lot of these. And go ahead and have Octave open and try out all of those commands that are in the quiz. By the end of it, maybe a little bit of it will, will feel a little repetitive, but if you put in these commands over and over again. That should kind of get it into your long-term memory and get you as comfortable using this as you are with using your calculator. And hopefully in future engineering classes, you will get a lot of use out of this program.